been doing? Long time no see. Hope you guys have all been doing great. I've been doing great, been super busy. Missed you guys for sure. Really, really excited to get the ball rolling here in 2025. A lot of big shows here, especially in Vermont. Recently, I shot the after movie for the Love Kelly Winterfest. <laughs> You guys want to watch that video it's on my channel probably can hear it but like i do have a little bit of a sniffle right now but like i don't care i'm really excited to get back into creating these videos today i want to show you guys how to do this really easy subject freeze frame transition inside of after effects i've said it before on my channel and i'll say it again after effects is going to allow you to do a lot more with these kind of transitions just because there's so much more that you can do inside the software so if you've never used after effects just follow along with me i'll go nice and slow also i've officially moved to mac i'm still using my windows pc but I bought a Mac, I bought the M4 Pro Max, but I'm super new to Mac. So if you guys have any suggestions on like ways to use it better or just like tips in general, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So I went ahead and laid out a few clips here from that sequence that you guys saw in the intro. For this transition, I often like to use subjects that are moving because you can keyframe the position and the scale of the freeze frame and make the transition look nice and smooth. That's how we're gonna go about doing it today. So we're really building off of the movement that we have in our clips already. So the first thing we're gonna do Let's go ahead and highlight them all, right click and replace it with an After Effects composition and save that wherever you need to. So once you get into After Effects here, you're gonna see that all of your clips are laid out on your timeline. So before we go any further, the first thing we need to do is organize our clips. So for this transition, because we're gonna be using the freeze frame on this clip, which is transitioning into this clip right here, I'm gonna take this clip and put it on top so we can keep it organized and that's just the way I found it's easiest to do it. So now that we have those two clips organized, we wanna find a spot in the clip where the subject is mostly in focus because it'll help make the mask a little smoother. And I often try and find a spot that's between five and 10 frames from the end of the clip because that's how long I like the transition to be. I've just found that it looks the smoothest that way in my opinion. So let's go ahead and press Command D, which is gonna duplicate that clip and we're gonna right click it, go to time and freeze frame. So now we have our freeze frame, which is this top clip that I have selected. Now what we need to do is create a mask around our subject. So we can go up to our pen tool here and if you hold your middle mouse button, you can move your canvas around. I'm gonna start down here, I'm gonna click and then start creating a mask around our subject. The better the mask is, the better the transition is gonna look. Clicking and holding and dragging to create those smooth bends here using control or command Z to undo any thing if you don't like the points that you have and then once we get to the end here just go ahead and connect that mask so now as you see we have a mask around our subject more or less now what i'm going to do here is i am going to shorten this so it's just the freeze frame as you can see and we're going to click and drag the clip that we're transitioning into we're going to click and drag this so that it's underneath and fills in that blank space so now you see we have a freeze frame over the clip that we're transitioning into now let's go ahead and clean up the freeze frame by opening this up go into your masks open the mask and then we're going to feather the freeze frame Move the feather to wherever it looks best. So if we click off here, like that looks better. Obviously it's not perfect, but it looks better. So oftentimes what I do is I select this box right here, which just turns this into a 3D layer, which normally opens up that transform option for you. If you select this box and you don't see transform show up, just open it and close the clip and you'll see it show up. That's just like a little nitpick thing that I've noticed. So now we actually need to create the freeze frame zoom. We're going to keyframe the scale and the position and we're trying to match his movement here. So as you can see, he's coming to the left and he's going up and to the left. So now that we have our keyframe selected, let's go to a frame before the end of the freeze frame and start zooming it in and moving the position accordingly, trying to match his movement. So I'm gonna bring it up here because he was going to the left and up. So make sure to highlight these keyframes and drag them to the end of the clip. If you feel like the freeze frame isn't going fast enough to match the speed of the clip, you can go ahead and just like increase the scale. So if we bring these keyframes back, I'm just gonna up the scale a little bit and then move them up a little bit more as well, just so it matches the speed that he's walking towards the camera. Now there's a few ways that we can make this look way better and we're gonna apply this to each freeze frame transition we do, but let me go ahead and show you how to do it. So highlight your keyframes and you can press F9 or right click here and go to keyframe assistant, easy ease, which is gonna smooth out those keyframes for you then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on motion blur and that's gonna make that look better right there as well now we've got the movement we've got the transition there's still one more essential step that we need to do so let's go back into the masks here on our freeze frame layer we're gonna click on our mask and on Mac we're gonna press command shift N which is gonna create a mask around our entire clip 
On Windows, I believe it's Command Shift N. Now we're gonna keyframe the opacity here at 100 at the beginning of the clip, keyframe it and go a few frames out. And this is where we're gonna decrease it all the way to zero, which is gonna help transition and ease that transition for us in the background and clean it up a ton. Make sure to highlight those keyframes and easy ease them. So simply put, that's our transition pretty much right there. But there's actually one more thing that we can do to clean this up even more. I'm gonna go into my composition settings up here. I'm gonna go to advanced and we can change our shutter angle, which is more or less gonna change the strength of the motion blur. If you really want the strongest amount of motion blur, use 360, but in this case, I'm just gonna use 270 because I feel like it's a nice middle point here. Now, if we play through this again, the motion blur is even stronger. So let's go ahead and do this on one more clip because I wanted to show you guys two examples. So for this clip, I'm gonna do it right about here. He's nice and lit up. So again, we're gonna press Command D to duplicate the clip. We're gonna right click this and go to time freeze frame. Now we're just gonna do the same thing as we did last time. We're gonna create a mask around the subject making sure to follow the subject here. We do have this little spot where the background is showing, going down and connecting that mask. Now this clip right here is the one we're transitioning into. So just to keep it organized, I'm gonna drag this back up. You don't have to do that. It's just how I like to do it. Now, before I clicked and dragged this clip, which left this black space underneath. But instead for this one, what I'm gonna do is click and drag this clip up here actually and extend it a few frames. That's just another way that you can go about doing it if that clip you're transitioning into has some extra leeway at the beginning of it. So we're gonna do the same thing on this freeze frame layer that we made. We're gonna open the mask. I'm gonna feather it here because it's really harsh on the edges. So I'm gonna feather it a good amount. So I'm gonna click this box again, open and drop that just so we can see the transform effect here. So now we keyframe the scale and the position just as we did before and go one frame before the end. And we're gonna zoom this in quite a bit, matching his motion, which he was going to the right up a little bit. So we're gonna keep zooming that in and we're gonna take him all the way off the screen here. So let's go ahead and clean up these keyframes we just made by highlighting them, right clicking and going to easy ease or pressing F9, which for some reason my F9 does not work. If you guys know the solution to that, let me know in the comments below. I don't know why that doesn't work. We're gonna enable motion blur here, which is gonna clean that up again for us. As you can see, we're gonna go to the mask again, click on the mask on our freeze frame layer, command shift N, which is gonna duplicate the mask and put one around the whole clip. Open up the second mask, keyframe the opacity, which is at 100. We're gonna go a few frames forward, and bring it back down to zero easy ease these keyframes. So now it's a smoother transition. You can see in the background, it fades in, which just makes that transition look a little smoother. So that's how you can do those freeze frame transitions, spice them up a few different ways, but I wanna show you guys a few other things as well. I use a plugin called Shake Sauce by Brian Delamata. Really nice plugin, works great with After Effects. I definitely suggest checking it out. I'm gonna go to Window Extensions and open up to Shake Sauce here for you guys to see. Now the way this works is we have these ones, which are all keyframed for us, does it all for us, which is really, really nice. I'm gonna find it a spot right about here and I'm gonna go ahead and use the hard hit with flash by double clicking it. You can see it adds a nice shake, which just adds some more impact to that transition. I wanna go ahead and copy paste this hit to another part of the sequence here. So I'm just opening this up and opening these keyframes, selecting them all, control C. We're gonna go right here to where this transition is as well. Control V and line up that middle keyframe because that's where the primary impact happens. That looks pretty good. It just adds some more impact to that freeze frame. I feel like it just makes it look cooler. You obviously don't have to use it. So guys, that's the majority of how you can create those freeze frame transitions and spice them up a little bit. But if you wanna see a little bit more of how I created the rest of the sequence, it's really simple stuff that you can apply to your videos. I'll go ahead and show you guys how you can do that right now. So on this clip here, I just sped it up a bunch, but I wanted to add some motion blur and the keyframe the movement a little bit. So I went to the beginning of the clip here, opened it up, opened the transform tool, and I upped the scale to 140 and I keyframed it and brought it all the way out and reset it here. So that way we have a little bit of a zoom out, which I just think adds some more movement to that clip. We can also add motion blur to that clip. We can even highlight these again, keyframe assistant and easy ease them. Now for this clip, I just did a really quick zoom in, which is really, really easy to do. Let's go ahead and open up this clip, go to transform and I'm gonna go right about here. And we're gonna keyframe the position and the scale and go about two or three frames out and zoom in a bunch. I'm gonna try and line up the subject more or less with the center of the frame. We've got a quick zoom right there. It looks a little harsh. So all you need to do is just activate that motion blur. And again, keyframe assistant, easy ease. I'm gonna reset these keyframes at the end to add a zoom out to the clip. So I'm gonna go a few frames before the end here. Click the keyframes for both of these, go a frame or two out, shift click both of these and reset.
reset them so it zooms back out for us. But I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag these to the end of the clip. Just some simple movement you can add to your videos. I figured I'd just throw this in here because why not? For this last clip, I didn't do anything special. I just applied a warp stabilizer and I went about 5%. So because we linked this After Effects project in our Premiere Pro, everything we do here is gonna translate into Premiere Pro. So once we open this back up, you'll see we have our entire sequence here. You'll probably need to render it, so just click on the sequence, go up to Sequence, Render Selection, so guys, I hope you enjoyed my first video back in two months. I had a lot of fun with this one, cooking this up for you guys. So I'm obviously not in my usual setup. I moved, gonna build out the office here, make it look real nice. So with that being said, guys, that's all I've got for you today. If this transition helped you or you learned something new, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you wanna see more from me, as well as commenting in the comments below. Anyways, guys, I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching, peace.